Hey everyone, it's Justin again. I'm back for another Jacob Collier tutorial, this time on his newest acoustic version of Stars, which is featured on the Jesse Deluxe album. And maybe some of us were surprised that it was it was billed as a, a voice memo, but it had layered guitars and layered vocals, so it's a little harder to tell what exactly was happening on a single guitar. But he just recently released the Taylor guitar video in his signature tuning. If you're a beginner guitar player, this song is a really great place to start if you're getting familiar with wanting to play more of Jacob's songs, whether you want to use the altered tuning or standard tuning. This tutorial is going to be in the altered tuning, but I'm also going to provide charts that show you the simple shapes that you could play it in standard tuning as well. So we're going to take a look at the chord shapes themselves and then stick around to the end and we'll take a look at the actual melodic passages, some of the more technical stuff. This is one of the most simple, straightforward songs that we've gotten from Jacob uh, thus far. This song is completely diatonic, no surprise chords, no modulations, no diminished chords, and there's really only two shapes that get you 90% of the entire song. And we're gonna take a look at each of these individually. And then there's a few other chords that happen only a handful of times. So I'm gonna demonstrate all these shapes once so you can just get the chord shapes under your fingers. And then I'll play through the song so you can hear how it's all laid out. If you're interested in playing along in the description below, there's a link to it, just a simple chord chart, which can be used for those of you playing in standard tuning. And if you're gonna play in the ultra tuning, I've got a link for the full transcription as well. So Jacob does play this song in his D-A-E-A-D -E tuning on a five string. Now Taylor did just release the Jacob Collier signature model five string, but I'm gonna show it to you on six string in D-A-E-G-A-D. Now, if you've watched any of the other Jacob Collier tutorials that I've released, you'll be familiar with all these chord shapes. There's nothing new on, on this song. In terms of what I call the chords themselves, I am gonna be referring to their shape meaning the shape relative to this tuning, meaning the open position. We, are, we do have a capo on the second fret to put us in the key of E, but imagine if we didn't have the capo, this open position chord would be considered a D chord. Now, if you're playing in standard tuning and you played a D shape, but a capo capoed up, you're still gonna call it by that shape. You're gonna call it D. But if you watch the little blue tutorial that Jacob did with through Taylor guitars, and he demonstrated some of the little blue chords, he was calling them by pitch. One, he didn't come up playing standard tuning guitar to learn those shapes to call him anything else. Two, he's got perfect pitch, so he knows what notes he's playing. He can also think of it in terms of piano. So I think it's helpful as a guitar player to refer to the shapes so that we can move the capo up and down if you need to for your voice, but you're not gonna have to think of it in terms of different pitches because we're not having to navigate between white keys and black keys like a piano player would. If you're interested in a more in-depth tutorial on Little Blue, you can find that link up here, and that's the, one, the first video I ever made uh, for on Jacob's Tunes and to see how we break that song down to learn it in this tuning. Okay, so first, I'm just gonna show you what the shapes look like, where they're located on the neck, and then we'll hear it all in context with the song. So the first thing that we need to learn is the major chord shape. Again, if you've watched any of my other tutorials, we've gone over this all before, so I'll just do this quickly. The major shape, or the D in this case, is zero, zero, two. And over all these shapes, we're always able to use these top two open droning strings. What to do with our third string? There's a few different possible approaches. I've covered that in other videos, but I'm just, in general, I'm just allowing this finger to, to rest against it, to mute it. Now it does wor work over some, or if not many of the chords, but just for the sake of translating from the five string to the six string or vice versa, just imagine that you're just allowing a finger to rest on it, to mute it. It's not a technical thing. It's not wrong. If it doesn't mute, sometimes it'll stick out if it's not muted, but for the most part, let's just go back to this major shape. So this D shape or the one shape in this case in the key. Now it's gonna look the exact same. We have our major one, four, and five chord. Like I said, all the chords in this song are diatonic. There's a major one, major four, major five, then there's a minor two and a minor six. Uh, and then just a couple other voicing changes on a couple other chords. So it's really straightforward. So we have our major one, our D, our G is up on the fifth fret above the capo, five, five, seven. So the shape looks the same as this did. 
5 chord, where our A, A shape, looks exactly the same, allowing those top two strings to drone. So those are, that's one shape, our major chord shape. The only other one we need to know to get 90% of the song is our major chord in first inversion. And he only uses it on the one chord. So if this is the, more, the one chord, or the D uh, shape, uh, in root position, meaning the root of the chord is in the bass. If we go up to the third of the chord, this is the major chord in first inversion shape is four, five, five. Again, this is on my nine easy shapes Jacob Collier chord tutorial video, so you can go more in depth with that. You can also find that right over here. So with those two shapes alone, we've got 90% of the song outside of some of the other little variations that he does. So I'm just gonna sing part of the first verse so you can hear it in context. Stars to go walk in the rain Feeling nothing, feeling everything Won't you tell me who I am? So this is the structure of all the verses. Really that progression so it's the one major chord, one in first inversion, the four, and the five. So it repeats. Now one variation that I did in there that I'm just going to show you quick, it's kind of know that Jacob will always be Jacob, and the next time you see him or hear him play this, he's going to play it differently. Even this live video is significantly different than the voice memo. He's substituted some chords, he's changed, he's played the four chord in place of the minor two chord in a couple places. He's even flip-flopped some of the lyrics. So don't be overly concerned with when to hit these top strings, when not to, because uh, sometimes he's finger picking, sometimes he's strumming. There's a lot of variation and it gives you, us a ton of freedom. So one variation that I did is the major chord in second inversion, which means putting the fifth of the chord in the bass. The place that he most commonly does it is he gets up to that five chord, or the A, what we call on the transcription, the A shape. The one chord in second inversion lives on this same fret, on that seventh fret above the capo looks like that. So 7, 9, 10. And he'll do it as like a... He does that kind of little riff often. But because this is a D chord in second inversion, meaning the A is in the bass, occasionally once he gets up to that A shape or that 5 chord and he goes back to the 1 rather than having to jump all the way down here, simply does that upper part of that D over A and releases the low bass string. So now it's just a D chord again, but just a slightly higher voicing. And the great thing about that is, is these two fingers, our ring finger and our pinky, are in place. Jacob tends to use his first three fingers. I'm going to encourage you to use all four, well, when you don't rarely, you don't really need all four at all times. But I like to keep my pinky on the what was a D string, which is now tuned up to an E. It's our fourth string. It's his third string on a five string. But you get it. He builds all these chords on the lowest three strings. And what's great about having these fingers up here in the pinky is that our next chord, a lot of times, is that one chord or the D shape in first inversion. So our fingers are already on the strings that they need to be. So this pinky doesn't really ever have to leave that fourth string, except when we get to the melodic passages, which we'll get to later. She was a singer in a band. I'll do anything to hold her hand. Now another new chord shape that we haven't looked at, the minor chord shape. So it's minor chord in root position, and he does this shape in two spots. We're up here on what would be the ninth fret above the capo. You'll also maybe recognize we, we're here as our five, here was our one in second inversion. These fingers are here. The sixth chord, I still leave my pinky there and I just slide up to the ninth fret above the capo. It looks like your 11th. So that's our minor shape in root position. So just to jump ahead, if that's the minor six, or what I'm calling the B minor seven shape, that same shape down on the second fret above the capo 
is our E minor 7, or our minor 2 chord. Now we're going to get to that one in just a little bit. And from here on, there's only one more chord, which is the second to last chord he plays in the entire song. So you've got all the chord shapes that you need to know to play everything so far. So I'll play through that part that uses the B minor 7. I'd do anything to hold her hand Just to tell me who I am She's so far All right, now we're going into the chorus. There's a little mel melodic fill in there. Again, we'll get to that later. Now, the only thing different about the chorus is that he starts on the four chord, or that G shape. And you'll notice a lot of times before he goes to a G shape, it's not every time, but he likes to do this one major chord, the meaning the tonic, in first inversion, going to the four chord in root position. Little blue. So things like that. It happens in a lot of the songs. I'm going to sing to the chorus, and the chorus is the first time we're going to hear that E minor chord. She's so far away. She's so far away. She's so far away. I know. Do you feel anything at all? So there we've got two new things that I've alluded to. We got that five chord or the A shape. So five to the one in second inversion, back to the five. And then he slides down to the minor shape on the second fret and kind of rakes from the top strings down, which is just a nice sound. From there he goes into the next interlude, which is kind of like the intro with some variation. We'll get to that in just a minute. And you'll probably notice between the voice memo version and this video version, they're a little bit different because he had multiple guitars to play the chords underneath. But this is the new thing about this tune for Jacob, is he's starting to play more what we call like a finger style arrangement where there is more notes that he's playing, playing melodic passages over chords. Now in these, he's not changing chords, but on the voice memo version, there were chords changing that accompany this melody. But as a guitar player, he's doing something that's kind of a new technical thing for him. Stars paint a picture of bloom. Why don't wake in such a lonely room? Won't you tell me who I am? Fall Like an angel in the snow Thought I'd see you in the afterglow We had that B minor 7 again Thought you'd tell me who I am She's so far. I'll break down that lick in just a minute. So we're moving on to the next chorus. Again, there's nothing different. This is more or less the same as the previous chorus. Sometimes he substitutes like uh, an E minor seven for a G. Again, there's, there's gonna be some flexibility. And when it comes to memorizing this, you're like, well, did he do the E minor here or did he do the G? Chances are next time he does it, he's gonna do it slightly differently. She's so far. into a short little refrain uh, using all the same chord shapes that we've already used in a slightly different order. Do you feel anything at all? Next, he goes into another interlude, which I'll break down in a minute, but I'll just play through it real quick. And lastly, ends on the outro verse. Again, all the same shapes. Stars. 
Thought you'd never fade away Thought I'd see you in the light of day Thought you'd tell me who I am Thought you'd take me as I am Thought now you see me Here we got a new chord right before the end. It's the five chord, it's the A, but it's the five seven. So if that was the five, that was the one in second inversion. We leave our pinky where it is. Seven, ten, ten, up again above the capo. Which is of course wanting to go back to the one to, for the big finish. And he does a descending melodic passage, which we're gonna break down in just a minute. But now you have all the shapes and the structure with, you know, only four shapes, really. Depending on if you do that variation of that one, there's just a few options that you can do. But even if you're in standard tuning, there's a D shape, an E minor shape, a D over F sharp shape, G, A, A7, and a B minor 7. So all relatively familiar shapes, hopefully in standard tuning even. So the structure, this, is, this song is a real gift for our way in to playing in Jacob's tuning. Um, before we start trying to jump all over and follow him through modulations and all these other crazy surprise chords, which we love, right? So this is a different kind of song for us or a different kind of song for him and uh, a way in for many others. Okay, so now let's take a look at the melodic passages. Again, I'm gonna encourage you to not get too caught up in note for note um, things because he, he varies this. Some of them are more or less licks. But the main melody that we can focus on, and he does this differently each time he plays it, but the idea of this harmony, descending harmony part. So we've got, again, when I'm calling fret numbers, it's above this. It's gonna look like your 12th fret, but we're 10 frets above the capo uh, on the our fourth string and the ninth fret of the second string. So we're gonna alternate between, this index finger is always gonna be on that second string, and on the fourth string, we're gonna alternate between our middle finger and our ring finger. So here we go down, this goes to seven and nine, goes to five and seven. Switching back to the middle finger, we got two and three. Back up to that five and seven, to the four and five, and then he releases the second string to set up that little lick. There's the first half of the intro. And now he does a little variation on the second half. So it starts with that lick of the end of the first phrase. I've got all of that tabbed out and the transcriptions available in the link in the description below. Now the next time the interlude comes by, he's always hinting at that same melody, but playing it in a slightly different way in a slightly different place. So the next time it comes around, again, just to show you the general area of where, what he's doing, doing that same hammer on, doing a hammer on onto the fourth fret, because that's our third, it's just an octave above that. Then doing a little lick between the second and fourth fret. So this is another one. He does this in a lot of songs as well. What this essentially is, it's our four chord or our G in second inversion. That's what that shape is. So if it's zero, two, three, that was a lot like seven, nine, 10. And then when he slides up, Essentially, he's hinting at the five chord in second inversion. So again, don't get too hung up on the note for note. These are licks that are available to you. We know he's gonna move them around, so feel free to have uh, some fun with them. So the second interlude that happens before the second verse is very similar to the intro using those double stops, so those two notes together. With 
some variation mixed in. Now a cool fill that happens just before the second chorus. He does not do that on the voice memo version or the album version, whatever you want to call it, um, but he does it here. And like I said, next time we hear him play it, he's going to put something else in someplace else. Put this, these licks in your toolbox, you know, and to utilize when you feel you have the facility to do so. Um, not that it's right or wrong if you include them or not. So let's listen to it once, then we'll break it down. Thought you'd tell me who I am. She's so far. It's going to be a shape that your fingers are already used to. Now we've done that hammer on before. And then it goes to that two, three on the fifth and fourth string, which was our, we could say it's that four chord and second inversion, but it's really more of a lick than a chord. So we can slide and I'm on my ring finger or I can be on my pinky. So what this is, think of your E minor shape and he's just sliding it chromatically. Now, when he gets to the fourth fret, he's not playing F sharp minor. We haven't used that chord. He's going back to that D over F sharp. So I just drop my ring finger on the fifth fret. Because when he plays this lick, he's really just playing those two notes. Which is what he does a lot of times when he's hinting at these chords. So what's indicated on the chord chart is the full chord voicing. But what he's playing sometimes is only some of the notes. A lot of the chords in root position are built around this idea of tenths. We have our root way down below and our third of the chord way up on top. But it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jacob does that so much faster and better than me. So that is the tenth. And so that's how we know where we are. We have our root and we have the character of the chord, major or minor, built on those two. So the third interlude before the final outro verse is just another variation on this melodic idea. Doing that hammer on again. We've kind of done something similar before. Now he's doing a little slide lick. Sliding from two to four to the open first string. Sliding back down, pulling off. That's down on the fourth string. So then he goes into this little bendy lick. And then another pull off. Four, two, open. Back into. And the last thing is the very last measure uh, when he does that descending melody. And he's just going down the scale. So uh, yes, our scales or our notes of our scale might be in a slightly different place than we're accustomed to, but if we've been playing in this tuning for a while, we can we can find it all. And we're having to skip that third string because he's not using it. So he gets up to that 5-7 chord. Now you see me as I am. Starting up on that fourth fret, we're just going to walk down the scale. 4-2 open. 4-2 open. Skipping out of the fourth string. 3-2 open. On the fifth string, we start on the fifth fret. Five, four, two, open. To the second fret of the low sixth string. And there you have the whole song. If you enjoy tutorials like this about Jacob's songs, I've got more songs on deck, more of his acoustic versions that I'm breaking down with full transcriptions that are available in my store up here, um, and as well as creating other tutorials like this. And if you wanna go even deeper to understand or get under the hood of this tuning and just more exclusive content uh, about Jacob's guitar playing, come visit us over at my Patreon where I'm breaking down other lessons just to get you yourself inside these tunings because learning his songs is really just kind of phase one. Uh, in terms of we're trying to emulate something that already exists. But if we can wrap our heads around how this tuning works, what the chord shapes are, all the inversions, things like that, it, there's a way in for us to start to use this for our own music. So if, if you haven't played in altered tunings before, it, consider that as like an additional lesson, an additional insight into 
understanding what's actually going on instead of just trying to replicate something that's already there. Let's make it part of your vocabulary. So come visit us over there. So click that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that you stay tuned when I've got more Jacob tutorials coming up very soon. All right, see you next time.